Hi, this is Justin Coletti. You may know me from Sonic Scoop, but today I'm on the Plugin Alliance channel, and I've got the privilege and the honor of talking to Joe Carroll. Joe Carroll, in case you're not familiar with him, is an amazing mixer, producer, recordist, engineer who's worked across genres from pop to rock to Broadway to country and jazz and beyond. And he has been nominated for no fewer than 10 Grammy Awards. He's been in this business for decades. Really excited to have him on. Joe, how are you doing? Thank you for having me, Justin. Looking forward to it. All right. Well, the excuse we have to talk to Joe today is that Neil, one of the members of the Plugin Alliance family and a pretty new member at that, has just come out with their newest plugin called Warble. This is a tape simulation plugin, a tape emulator, but it does some things that your average tape simulator does not do. It has some really interesting sections in there, a pretty comprehensive filter section that I want to talk to Joe about quite a bit the modulation section that allows you to do some effects in there, tape-based effects that a lot of other tape simulators don't do, and an age section that lets you weather it in some really interesting and creative ways. So, Joe, Warble from Neold, any first impressions, first thoughts? What really stood out to you about this plugin? Well, number one, the sound of every aspect of it. Uh, Those geniuses over at Neold, I I don't know what they what they have in their drinking water over there. But everything they put out, you've probably noticed, sounds amazing. Uh, super analog sounding and feeling, and, and even the way that you use it. So it, it's not just modulation. It, it's great sounding modulation. You know, it's not just uh, a high pass filter or a low pass filter or uh, the tape age. I mean, like, everything has has so much character, you know what I mean, and richness to it. it it's not just a simple digital Hey, I'm going to chop off the signal here at 10K and nothing beyond that. Go it it's it's got flavor, uh, you know, and, and it, it, just like everything else in our product line. That was number one. Number two, even though it doesn't look like it has that many knobs, Justin, it it's the right knobs in the right spots. If that makes any sense, one of my favorite tools, you know, uh, on mixing with any channel strip or any mix within any individual plugin is where I'm going to high pass, you know, and and where I'm going to roll off top end or bottom end. And, and those are right there, and they sound great. And, and also, the, the aging of the tape was very, very effective at not only helping tame high-end on digital, you know, things, uh, acoustic guitars that were recorded, you know, um, kind of spiky, thin, that kind of a thing, but also, you know, com- combine that, the, that age factor with the roll-offs and you could really really get um you know percussive samples you know that maybe um kind of find themselves in the in the mix like uh smacking you in the face a little bit you need to set them down in the mix a little all all those kind of things it's just very very effective at that and and that that's a big part that's a big part of my day a lot of times especially you know when i'm mixing maybe pop music where every you know there's a lot of samples so it, it's, it's very effective, very effective tool. Yeah, well, you covered a lot of ground there. And like you say, it looks so simple. It has so few controls, but it does so much. I think there's really these three sections in there that you don't really find on a lot of other tape simulators or tape saturators. There's that filtering section with pretty extensive low pass and high pass filtering, which I know is something you use a lot in mixing. So I want to ask you more about that. There's the modulation section that allows you to do kind of more far out, almost like flanging and chorusy style of effects. And then there's that aging section that lets you degrade the sound in some pretty interesting ways. Going back a little bit to talk about filtering, low pass filters, high pass filters. I know that's something that you use a lot in mixing. Can you give us a sense for what your approach is in using those kinds of filters in your work? I literally use them on everything. Uh, There's almost not a track except for maybe some, uh, you know, sub bass synth things, uh, occasionally some kick drums uh, that I, that I don't high pass, you know, uh, a lot of times, even if it's at 30 cycles, there's a high pass filter there, bass guitar, you know, it may be as low as 50 cycles or or 40, but it's there. But when you get beyond bass world, you know, um, all the other drum elements, you know, synth elements, guitars, lead vocals, I'm always, you know, finding where I can chop off things in a musical way to make the bass, and the kick, you know, as tight as they need to be. You know, when you get, you know, a lot of our modern productions, for example, uh, you know, as well as, as I do, they're not 24 tracks anymore. They're maybe 124. And so there's lots and lots of tracks building up with information. It may be subtle. It may be very subtle on this guitar pass, how much 80 cycle uh, stuff is there. But what if you add that up over eight passes of electric guitar? 
You know what I'm saying? Maybe those synth tracks, there may be 16 of them in some of these modern pop productions. And the amount of track that is building up in some of these at 60, you know, or 70 cycles is plentiful. And so if we want to keep that kick and that bass sounding the way we want them to sound, we need to roll off that information. And, and, and it, it, but in a musical way, you know, you don't, you don't want to cut out anything that needs to be there for that track, of course. But there's a lot of space you can clear, you know, in the low end. And the same with the top end. You know, a, a lot of times I'm getting guitars that maybe, maybe have... Um, Either, either within the original recording themselves or with what I'm having to add to get them to cut through, you know, there's a lot of information, uh, jangly information, you know, some spiky, harsh stuff. Uh, by the time you, you know, crank the, uh, you know, 8K on the on the SSL plugin or something like that by 10 dB to get it to really bite through there. Well, there's other stuff when, you, when you're cranking it like that, that, that jumps out, you know, at, at 10 or 12 or whatever. And so I can chop off that top end of the really shiny stuff that really, I don't need the electric guitar to live there. I need that 3K, you know, bite. I need that, you know, that 180 punch on the low end. I, I, I don't need 14K on electric guitar. You know, that's where I need that in my vocal and my hi-hat, various things like that. So, so yeah, that's a very, very uh, prominent part of my mixing is deciding where I can chop the top or chop the bottom off for sure. Well, another thing that's unusual here for a tape simulator is the whole modulation section that allows you to get more flangery and kind of chorusy effects. Can you tell us a little bit about that and whether you found that useful at all when you were trying out this plugin? I did. I did. It, it's a lot of fun. So it, it's based on Wow and Flutter, which of course is a you know that 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 those terms go back as far as tape itself. You know, variations in the speed of the tape machine, of course. Um, it was was the 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 uh, reel of tape itself perfectly flat you know our turntable on our record player was it flat you know that was the hole punched in the middle of the record exactly in the center and, and you know perfectly round all those things could cause if they weren't uh, you know there cause certain amounts of modulation so the modulation that you're hearing is based on that effect it, it's not you know it, it's more than just pitch change it's 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 based on the pitch changes that occur from slight, you know, speed variations across the tape heads. And, and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, you know, I pulled up a pop mix that I had just finished, uh, for McKenzie Johnson. And, uh, cause I thought it'd be a good candidate for this, you know, to, to play around and learn the plug in. And I walked away wishing I could have a redo and remix, <laughs> remix a record a little bit. So, um, for example, um, the depth that the modulation added to some synth parts that were, they were great. Don't get me wrong. They were great, but maybe they were a little, just a little stagnant, if that makes any sense. I added some of the wow and the flutter in various spots, um, you know, to, to create the, a dimension of depth that wasn't, that wasn't there prior. You, you can use this radically and get massive levels and massive depth of modulation. But, it, you know, a lot of times what, you know, people like me are going to be doing in our, uh, mixes and our in our productions is using uh, a lot less of it you know it's subtle and 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 the one cool thing about it is there's these little screws um in addition to just how much of the wow and the flutter you want combined with the slow tape speed and the and the fast tape speed which of course control the the you know the the tempo let's call it of the modulation there's these little set screws you know that you can go into and fine tune it within those bounds so it, it's almost infinitely, in, you know, um, adjustable, if that makes any sense, to, to get it really, really, not, not only the depth that you're wanting of it, but even the tempo that you want it. It's, it's pretty cool. It's very cool. So there's one more section here, and that's something that might be a little bit more familiar to people using tape saturation tools, and that's this aging section. But I think Warble from Neold has this whole different spin on the aging section. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how you end up using that section? Yeah, good question, Justin. That that was actually probably my favorite uh, feature of the plugin itself was the age knob. Um, I'm constantly finding myself using you know limiters or fast attack compressors or tape simulations, uh, you know, rolling off high end. Anything I can do to try to fit certain digital tracks or samples and things like that within a mix. And this age knob just magically, you know, again combined with that filter knob, of course, had a had a uh, just a magical way 
of chopping off the 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 unwanted dynamic range. You, you know what I'm getting at? The unwanted attack and 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 spikiness that that maybe the original signal had that was making it hard to place inside the mix. It, it, you know, without any compression or anything, just, just just turn that age knob until it fit. You know, it was just, it was great. And, and also in that center section is a very musical distortion knob, uh, dirt knob, I think it's called. And and it just, you, you know, w- with distortion, there's about a thousand or more different flavors of distortion. You know, the circuit that itself that we're overdriving, you know, that's why guitar players have 1,400 you know, different uh, stomp box options in their, in their arsenal. It, you know, not, a, not every circuit breaks up the same. That said, they, you know, to try to keep with, with, you know, uh, to try to keep it real usable and, and, and just quick to get around, you know, there's, there's one knob and, and you just adjust the amount and they chose a very musical circuit. So I was having a lot of fun using that on like snare drums and kick drums. It found myself not only using it subtly within a mix to find ways to get things to fit, uh, you know, um, adding some grit to the, to the attack of a synth part, getting it to come to the uh, front of the mix more, all the way to creating snare drums and kick drums from stock samples in, in my library that didn't even, uh, it didn't, you know, resemble the original raw file by the time I got done with it whatsoever. It's like you could go in and, and get the most bland kick drum and make 16 different options of it for for various ty- you know uh, hip hop or whatever samples you could you could get crazy with this thing so it, it was a lot that that section uh is, is a lot of fun and, and right under that there's a noise option you know in that middle section and that that is is indeed you know analog noise just the you know the, the hopefully something we're not getting in this interview right now and so if you want that to accumulate a little bit of you know every once in a while in some you know, some samples, it, it's fun to have a little, a little uh, old analog noise in there. And so you, you, you do have control of how much of that. It's not just, you know, some plugins put that noise in there all the time. It's kind of cool that they gave us the option to have either zero noise and just the other artifacts of distortion and aging and various things, or we can actually put the, you know, some, 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 uh, some noise in there as well, you know, some noise floor in there. Yeah, it's nice that you have that many options and that much ability to change the sound with so few controls. I really love it when plugins can strike that balance of being simple and straightforward and also really flexible at the same time. And that's something I think is definitely going on over here in Warble. If you guys want to try out this plugin for yourself, the best thing you can do is go to plugin-alliance.com where you can try out this or any of the other plugins that they make for free for two weeks over at plugin-alliance.com or just get their whole mega subscription bundle. I use it every day in my work. It's got a ton of invaluable tools in there. Hey, Joe, quick question for you. In your mega subscription bundle, what are your favorite Plugin Alliance tools? Are like there three plugins that you use most often? Well, let's see. Can I do five, Justin? Is that is that is that going to be okay? Have at it. All right. All right. So without, I mean, Every mix that I do without fail, the number one plug-in across my mix is a channel strip of some type. Probably number one, Justin, I would say, is the SSL 4000E. I just love that sound of that. I mean, what a classic, iconic sound, you know? But that's a close, close... I'm going to call it 1 and 1A, all right? This isn't number two. Uh, This is 1 and 1A, or B, 1B, uh, the SSL 9000. You know, because we have the the full top octave and that full bottom octave, but still, you know, unforgivably that SSL quality and sound that we love. So that that that's number one and one B. <laughs> number two, man, uh, you put me on the spot. The Amec ninety ninety nine. I love that. I I kind of grew up on that desk a little bit in my early days. I was in a studio here in Nashville. There was there were two rooms in Nashville that had that desk. And, and I was lucky enough to get to spend a lot of years in that room and freaking loved that desk. Um, so after that many years, you know, of, of not having that flavor uh, in my arsenal, all of a sudden it's back, you know, so it's just a great all around tool. And the, man, I tell you the, the focus, right. Well, I've been doing a lot of jazz and Broadway style records lately. And that focus, right. Is right there as well. So I'm going to go number three with that guy. All right, so number four, mm, black box, the black box, especially the new one. Uh, first insert across my stereo bus. Um, y- y- you know, if there's anything that was missing 
uh, from you know guys that remembered mixing on consoles, you know, and 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 going into Pro Tools. It was the you know that saturation that the stereo bus is getting giving us you know our group masters or our stereo bus was was hitting us all that circuitry in a certain way and it was flavoring it for sure and all of a sudden you know um we didn't have that inside of pro tools and i feel i've used a lot of different things uh to be real honest a lot of different things across my stereo bus over the years trying to find that sound you know that i wanted you know uh, that that effect and i feel like the black box you know, is definitely what gave it to me. And very, very, very pleased to say that that is on basically every mix I've done for probably, you know, the last three years or so, ever since uh, I, I became a Mega Bundle uh, subscriber myself. Boy, number five. Man, there's so many. How about, let's go with something overlooked, overlooked, but very, very effective, is the BX Opt Opto. Uh, the, you know, it's, it's, it's not really an LA two A. It's not really an LA three A. It's 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 definitely optical in its release, but we we have adjustments over it. So um, I, I love using optical compressors a lot across uh, background vocals because a lot of times my lead vocal is very in your face eleven seventy six kind of thing. You know, purple MC seventy seven for example in the in the um, PA family, and so I'm looking for something different sometimes across my background vocals. Uh, which means optical release instead of, you know, a FET circuit. And I can really fine tune, you know, because of its flexibility, I can fine tune the, the, uh, the release with the BX Opto. And that, that may be a little unexpected, but that's a, if some of you guys, you know, some of you out there haven't um, experimented with that one, you know, when you're trying to look for that LA2A, LA3A type of flavor, that would be maybe a fun one to play with. It's very versatile. Yeah. It reminds me a little bit of this new old warble in the respect that it's one of these tools that's both simple and flexible at the same time. Really simple layout, really few controls, but a lot of flexibility within it. And a lot of color too. So uh, very cool one. I'm sure we could keep on going and we get like a hundred plugins deep, uh, but we should probably stop here to let these people try this stuff out for themselves. Again, you can go to plugin-alliance.com to try out any of these plugins we've been talking about uh, for yourself. In the meantime, uh, Joe, if people want to keep up with you, find out what you've been up to, what are the best places for them to get a hold of you, see what you've been up to and all that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, probably Instagram, uh, in the mix with Joe Carroll. And my my, my uh, name is spelled a little odd, C-A-R-R-E-L-L. -L. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, I also have a Facebook page, uh, and I think that's in the mix with Joe Carroll as well. So either one of those are great places to, to hook up with me. And I, I, get a, I get a lot of great responses from PA uh, viewers uh, on vid various videos and things like that. So I, re I really appreciate the... Um, the acceptance and the the warm uh, fuzzy feeling I get from the PA uh, family um, it, it's 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 great to hear from you guys. Yeah, Joe has done a handful of great videos right here on the Plugin Alliance channel on YouTube, including that one on consoles that you just mentioned. You got to check that one out if you haven't already. And there's going to be a new one where he walks us through the knee old warble. So definitely check that one out as well. He goes through his use of tape saturation, tape simulation, the filtering, the modulation effects, the aging controls. So don't miss it. Thanks again for hanging out with us. Joe, thank you for being here. Oh man, I had a good time. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys for joining us at home. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop, this time on the Plugin Alliance channel. See you next time.